let me fold this up. In the general properties, we have the internal reflection, diffuse transmission, primary reflection. And this is, although this is, you know, a great and, you know, quite a powerful way to adjust um, hair color and like reflections and everything, it is sort of like the older, it is Redshift's like older solution here. Um, and there are a lot more parameters to be concerned about. Uh, so here in this case, I'm just doing a, you know, a woman's hair. And what I'm going to use instead of this redshift hair node, I'm going to use the principled hair node. And this node is, I forgot the name of the author of this paper, um, but it's all about how <clears throat> essentially um, it's essentially, essentially we have um, the reflection on the hair and we have um, the color by way of melanin, how much melanin is in the hair and how red is that melanin. Um, so, you know, when we unfold this, we have diffuse contribution, we have variation, um, but first we have reflection slash transmission which I'm gonna break down. And then we have the color. The color has four settings here. The thing is, if I put the, here, let me make this uh, like a green. If I put the albedo mix to one, then we're actually no longer getting uh, the physically accurate or realistic uh, hair color um, because it's now using an albedo as opposed to melanin and um, what is it like phenomelanin or something? Let's see if I drag this in. Yeah, pheomelanin. Um, so, you know, and we can blend between them, but, you know, it's, it's, it's not the most realistic. So I'm gonna put that back down to zero and you see there's no green. So this albedo color is irrelevant when the albedo mix is at zero. It's the same idea with diffuse, okay? Um, so I'll put that color in there and put that up to one. And now, you know, we're, it's like a different quality of just sort of fake hair color. Um, and, you know, we can blend that in with the diffuse amount. But for realistic hair, we want to stay away from albedo and diffuse and focus on uh, the melanin. So we have um, a slider at zero. We're going to get essentially white hair. And then at one, we're going to have the, we're going to have black hair essentially. Now, if we go through the slider, we're going to see we're going to go through ranges of blonde, brunette, red, and then black. And within each one of those areas, like let's say I want blonde, so I'm going to bring this melanin down. Now I can focus on the melanin redness or the pheomelanin, and I can turn that down. And then I'm getting a very softer, lighter uh, blonde color. If I bring that all the way up to one, then I'm getting uh, you know, a much more rich uh, blonde color. And um, so just by focusing on the melanin and the pheomelanin, we can really uh, dial in a realistic color. But how um, how the the hair plays with light in like reflection and transmission. Um, we have some control here, and it's I think a little more straightforward than in Cinema 4D's hair material. In Cinema 4D's hair material, we have specular, we have primary, secondary, and back specular. Um, there's a transparency here uh, also, but there's also this illumination section and these sliders um, diffuse roughness variation and reflectiveness um, do matter um, so i can you know increase the roughness and uh, add some variation and refresh this and actually you know what? i'm hmm, well we'll see actually i don't think now it's going to matter because i'm using the principal tear right so let me actually just um, to undo that. Um, 
so what I want to point out is um, in the reflection slash transmission, we have the roughness along uh, the length of a hair or uh, the length of all the hairs. That's, excuse me, that's just roughness. And then we have uh, the roughness across the whole um, like hair body and that's roughness radial. Um, so the lower these values are, the more intense and um, crisp or sharp the uh, reflection will be on the hairs, the greater this is, the, um, the softer, more spread out it will be. So if I set this roughness down to a low value, and let me, um, let's go with just the key light here so we can we can see this uh, let's do one more refresh okay so we can see those specular or you know we can see those reflections there with a very low roughness value um, and as i increase this it's going to become wider and it'll become softer as well it won't be as intense so this is like 0.5 uh, almost right. Um, so this is a much, you know, softer looking effect, and we can go all the way up to one, um, and you know, it's going to look very much the same. But let me bring this back to its default. So that's like along the length, and now let's focus on the uh, radial roughness. I'm going to bring that down to a very low value. Let's, you know, let's do zero. Okay, yeah, and these do play together, both of these settings, right? So that's why when roughness radials at zero, we got nothing. So I got to put something in here, right? So that's probably the lowest value I can enter. Um, way too low to get anything. So I'm going to bring it up just a bit. And I'm going to start to slide this up and we're going to see more color come in like around that specular right and that's that that um radial roughness that reflection across the uh all of the hair's width okay um so i you know i find this to be a little more straightforward uh, I'm going to put these back to their defaults, uh, but then we have this angle shift, and this is going to actually allow us to like position where these reflections are going to be, like at the root or at the tip. So if I want um, the reflections to be um, at the tip of the hairs, then uh, let's see, I think that's the negative value, and it goes from negative 15 to positive uh, 15. Um, so that's uh, the reflections are closer to the tip and we can turn down the uh, roughness so that hopefully that'd be more apparent. And then as I increase the angle shift up to the positive 15, then we're gonna see those reflections closer to the, uh, the root, okay? Um, now the IOR, the index of reflection or index of refraction, that is um, 1.55. That's the, uh, I think the, um, the physically accurate value for human hair. Um, the lower this is, the less reflective the hair will be. Let's put the roughness values back up and put this down to its lowest value one. Okay, so we're getting barely anything here. So let's just bring it up just a smidge. And there we go, and we're starting. And so again, the greater this value, the more reflective the hair is. Um, and so we're seeing more uh, reflectiveness and, and hair uh, color through the um, transmission uh, here. So let me reset to default here. Um, samples in this case is irrelevant because I am using uh, Redshift um, auto sampling. So 